Welcome, shalom, to the voice out of Zion. And once again, we have a great show for you because we have great guests. And as usual, we have Prime Minister Prince Asiel, yes, sir. Ben Israel, in the repair kingdom of uh, the African Hebrew Israelite nation of Jerusalem. And we have our illustrious friend and priest, <laughs> Kohen Pastor Tatum. And today we're going to be uh, talking about uh, the reality of how such a great movement of 50 years of the African Hebrew Israelite nation of Jerusalem escaped so many people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to the extent that when we met the pastor, one of the things he said after he had been with us a while, he said, how come the people don't know about you? Right, right. And uh, what I want to do is preface with the 82nd chapter of Psalms. Okay. Because we got to understand that there were certain things put in place that when we made the move for freedom and headed toward Israel, our people didn't know because they were sidetracked um, by the riots that ensued as a result of Dr. King getting killed, even though that played a major part in, uh, in our ability to escape America because um, the Europeans were uh, preoccupied <laughs> with the streets and the cities on fire and burning and, wow. and the rioting. Wow. Uh, so I want to read this because it's, it, it, it illustrates why now, after 50 years, we have to do this. We have to come to the media. We have to explain what happened, what we did, and how it, uh, and how it transpired. Uh, and again, uh, also in the show, Professor, uh, the, uh, Professor Lee Cummins is going to come on, yeah. and he's going to accentuate uh, our subject matter with information that he has as a result of being an impeccable and powerful researcher in, in the history, not just black history, but the history of the world. Right. Because the history of the world is black history. So I want to read uh, from the book of Psalms. It says that God standeth in the congregation of the mighty and he judges among the gods. It said, how long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? So it presupposes that there are other gods. And we'll get to that in another. But it presupposes there are other gods. So there are some people who are supposed to be acting like gods. And what are they supposed to be doing? It says, defend the poor and the fatherless. And do justice to the afflicted and the needy. A thankless job. <laughs> when you look at it, right? It said, deliver the poor and the needy and rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Now this is the part, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. And in Hebrew, foundations, it, the word is musad, which translates into institutions. So all the Eurocentric institutions were arrayed against you, so you wouldn't be living in reality. You would be living in survival. And in survival, it's hard to, to see what's really going on in the world because you're worried about staying alive, eating, <laughs> drinking, right. you know what I'm saying? Just the drudgery of living in the context of the slave existence. And so the institutions have been against us all the time because... Also in the book of Daniel, said that, he, that the adversary would seek to change times and laws. And that's exactly what he did. He left no stone untampered with. And, and for some of you, it'd be hard for you to come to terms with the fact that there was a whitewashing of history. I mean, a pure whitewashing of history. Absolutely. And as time goes up, we're going to talk about those things. But what we want to do... We want to uh, talk to you, Pastor, because you met uh, some brothers and sisters some years ago because you had an epiphany yeah. to leave the church yeah. and to establish yourself, in which you related to me, in the Hebrew-Israelite culture. Yes, sir. So we want you to explain that. And then uh, you watched one of our videos 
Yeah. And uh, you commented on the video, so we want you to do uh, first how you got into this understanding. Okay. And then what you thought, what your epiphany that came out of the video that you saw, because it's real important because it relates to this. Yeah, it does. Because it does. that because our people in darkness, they couldn't see us if they wanted to, because it was obscured. Yeah. All the institutions, yeah. you know, had our people jacked up. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now, 50 years later, we can come back with the assistance of uh, the uh, the uh, professor, uh, Professor Lee Cummings, oh, who has bought the absolute truth about the history of the world and has set the tone to help catalyze the next 50 years of our development in the world. Yes, sir. So, Pastor, please give us that story. <laughs> well, hallelujah. I'm just uh, so thankful and honored to be here among such great uh, giants. Uh, the Bible always talks about uh, your gift will um, bring you before great men. And I'm so glad that I'm in, have an opportunity just to be in your presence. And uh, all of you are wonderful, wonderful uh, human beings that have done great and mighty things. Uh, one of the things that sort of happened to me was all my life I always wondered who I was. I always had that question, uh, the, the, the Negro question, who am I? And uh, I had that question. I was asking people as I was coming up, why is there all of these white images all over the place? I mean, when I close my eyes to pray, all I can see is some white image in my mind. And, and of course, the, the, the older saints, as we used to call them, they say, no, you ain't supposed to be seeing none of that. You're supposed to not see nothing. I said, well, why is it all over the walls? It's all over the place, you know. And uh, I would ask these questions, and, and nobody gave me the answers that were enough to satisfy the curiosity that I, I, I had. Or if they would ask the question, it would cause a whole bunch of other more questions, you know, to come. Well, if that's the case, well, what about this, this, that, and the other? And uh, I found myself um, sort of wearying people of, of the questions. But nevertheless, the Father sort of uh, brought me to this understanding about 10 years ago. I was uh, talking with someone, and uh, he was a Hebrew, he was an Israelite, and uh, he was saying certain things to me, and I said, oh man, that sounds like you got a nice little twist on that, on that scripture, you know, that, I ain't never heard it that way before, but hey, if that's the way you want to do it, hey, that'll work, you know, and uh, I was still uh, not uh, conscious, I was truly asleep. And uh, it, it took me uh, actually having a dream after we had got off the phone with one another because I was very upset. You know, we had went with swords, like just the word all night, just talking and arguing over uh, different points of dogmas and, and different things. And um, I, I had a dream that night, and it, um, that dream sort of startled me when I woke up because I could still remember it. And uh, nevertheless, I said, if, it, if, if there's anything that this person is trying to tell me that's important, then um, show it to me because right now I don't understand what they're talking about. It's, it's so far off and so just didn't make any sense, you know. I'm thinking they're reading out of a different Bible, a different perspective. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I prayed that little prayer, <laughs> that little prayer of just reveal it to me. If it's, if it's that important mm -hmm. and, and this, it keeps coming back in my life, then it must be something that I cannot see. And I need um, uh, uh, to be... It needs to be revealed or shown. My eyes really need to be open to this truth. And um, lo and behold, it seemed like that, that morning I got up and did my Bible study like I always did. And, uh, but this time the, the book opened up right on Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I started going mm -hmm. through uh, uh, those verses. And, and this time instead of me um, focusing on the blessings, I started focusing on the curses and, and really got a chance to see some of those questions that I always ask, why are we, why are black people seem like in the state or the shape that they're in? And uh, from there, it seemed like my eyes, the blinders came from my eyes or fell off my eyes. And I said, how long has this been in the book? How long has this been there right in front of me? But I couldn't see it. And I, I started, I was never one of the, the kind of people that would just take your word for it. I, 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 have, to, I have to see it for myself. And uh, so when I began to study it and look throughout the world, you know, when I started looking through, the, through those, those various verses, I said, this fits us everywhere. And I said, how could this be? How could this be? And uh, after I got over uh, uh, the hurt that I had been deceived, because it came to a point where I had to admit to myself that 
maybe I was deceived all this mm-hmm. time. <laughs> and, you know, the scripture that talks about he deceived the whole world. Mm-hmm. And it's sometimes it's very hard for us to uh, admit when we're deceived. You know, it's better when you're deceived. It's better when <laughs> him, you know, you being deceived, but not me. I can't be deceived. But uh, I had to come to that, that crossword where, where I had to say, well, maybe I was deceived. And um, I cried for about a month or so because of all of the lies that I was uncovering and, mm. and the truth that I was finding. And um, it took me about a, about a month or so to just really cry and just really just, man, tear my, rent my, my, my mantle and my garments because I was really uh, 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 sincere uh, in, in my uh, quest for truth. And um, nevertheless, after the tears stopped flowing, I had to make a choice. Uh, what do you do here? What do you do from this point? Do I keep this to myself? Or do I venture out to tell somebody else? Because when I heard it, you know, it made me feel the way I felt. And I was like, wow, should I share this, you know, or keep this? Or what should I do with all this, this newfound truth? So I decided to tell it. And as I told it, uh, a lot of people know my testimony. A lot of people in my congregation at that time didn't want to hear it and didn't like it. And I began to, to lose people in the congregation because I was telling them the truth. But nevertheless, my family, we started keeping the laws, the statutes, the judgments, keeping the Sabbath day. And all those things truly blessed us. And, uh, uh, um, uh, but nevertheless, um, I've been walking and, and going and pursuing and growing all these 10 years. And um, I ended up meeting uh, uh, one, of the, one of the first people that I told about uh, this, this revelation of truth. I, I had met him through another brother, and I called him. And he said, man, everybody that left your church, they're going to be sorry. And this was uh, Dr. Eliad in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And uh, a wonderful brother. He came and, and uh, he said, I, I need you to come sit at a table with me, though, and meet some, uh, some, some more people who actually uh, have left America and went to Israel. I said, now that's a new thought. <laughs> I said, the scripture does say we're supposed to leave our country. And, and uh, I said, these people actually left Chicago and they entered in my own city and they left and went to Israel. I said, yeah, you need to come sit at this table. So um, I went, and nevertheless, I, I came, and I, I got a chance to sit down. And uh, uh, the first person I met was, was Prince uh, uh, Asiel, and he began to uh, uh, talk to me, and he said, ask me to pray. I think it was, it, we were at the table, and he asked me to pray. And uh, I prayed, you know, the best way I knew how to pray, and, you know, from my upbringing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it went over well, and everybody, you know, pretty much had a, um, you know, a great disposition of talking and greeting me afterwards. And he said, come back again, you know. And I started coming back. Uh, 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 to the to the regular meetings that they were having in Chicago, and um, it got to the place where um, my wife and I we were wanted to renew our, our wedding vows, our, our 20th year wedding wedding vows, and um, uh, Prince said, um, and we had our idea to go to the um, to New York. We wanted to go see the the Grand Canyon, and he said, well, if you are Israelite, Israel's supposed to be in Israel. Why don't you renew your vows in Israel? I said, wow, I never even would have thought that, <laughs> you know, and uh, in, his, in his wisdom, he was, he was pushing me to experience everything that he heard me talking about in that Bible. He wanted that to become a reality for me, and uh, nevertheless, I took him up on that offer, and we ended up uh, going to Israel. We stayed at his house, and um, when I was there, uh, we, we met all of the different uh, uh, saints that left there 50 years ago. And uh, in my mind, it was when we got off the plane, we were crying. My wife and I, we just we couldn't get out the airport because we were just crying the whole time. Just I said, baby, it's more to Israel than just the airport. We got to go forward. <laughs> you know, eventually we just in the airport, in the terminal, just crying because we saw the sign that says, welcome home. Mm-hmm. Welcome home. Welcome back. Welcome to Israel. And, and we knew that that meant for us that we were back home. We were back where it started. And uh, when I got a chance to see all of the, the older saints that were there and how good they looked and how healthy they were, they were running up three flights of stairs and we had to catch up and say, hold on, wait for us. And they were, they were just very athletic and in shape. It, it just, it just uh, um, caused me to think about how it was in their time of them coming up. And I began to say to myself, wow, if, if Malcolm X uh, could have went and came to Israel, he would still be alive because that's the generation, that's, that's those people. If, if Dr. King would have left America and went there and stayed there, he would still be the age that, that they are. And, and I, I had this, this, this um, uh, uh, 
energy on me that said, why don't everybody know about this place? It seemed like there was a disconnect, at least from my generation uh, and, and, and from the people who had made it, even though many people, Whitney Houston had been there and Stevie Wonder and all of these, these famous artists had, had been to that place. It was unfamiliar to me. And when I talked to the Kohim in Israel, Kohim uh, Naviel, he gave me the message dealing with the whole house of Israel. And um, when I came back from Israel, I was so empowered that it, it was almost a mandate on me to, to shout it, to talk about it, uh, to allow people to truly know about this place and to do all I could to write music, to, to lift up the Most High and to really uh, partner my whole congregation and, and people uh, with the work that they have started over 50 years ago. And um, they already always told me, even at the table, when I, I first went over there, they said, you're getting the whole benefit of our 50 years. So you, even though you've been in this way uh, three years or four years or five years, he said, you're going to get the benefit of our 50. So add our 50 on to however long you have been in there, and that's how long this thing is. So um, uh, I, I guess I've been around for 55, 60 years now. <laughs> And, and, and I'm excited about it. Uh, last week, I was watching the, um, the, uh, the broadcast. And uh, when I was watching the broadcast, it, you had uh, uh, Professor Cummings and, and you were talking and, and, the, and the Prime Minister, y'all were talking about, you know, the different lost history and the artifacts and the things that had happened and the things that take place. And, and as I was listening to that on my way uh, uh, to work, I, I, I began to just have this epiphany and thinking like, I said that community in the Mo it really represents what what the work that you that that, that you, you did 50 years ago it really represents and it sort of was an epiphany to me that it reminded me of Joseph and the things that that Joseph uh the son of Israel uh went through because he had a dream at 17 of of greatness and uh, his brothers hated him uh, because of his dream of greatness that he said he had. And they, they hated him because he would always, you know, snitch on them, too, you know. And, and, uh, but he made, his father loved him so much that he made him a coat of many colors. And um, they ended up uh, 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 going against him and wanting to harm him. And they ended up putting him in a pit. And um, in that pit... Uh, a lot of people believe, you know, that it was his brothers that sold him into slavery. But we know when we go back to read that text that it was the, the Midianite merchant men that actually sold him to the Egyptians and took him on into to Potiphar's house. And um, when he was down there, the father was still with him doing this great work with, within him. And um, at the end of that, that story, uh, his brothers came to Egypt because there was a famine all over the world. And... Um, uh, when they came, Joseph recognized them, but they couldn't recognize Joseph. And uh, that's how I sort of felt about the community. I was like, y'all can recognize me, but I can't recognize y'all because y'all have translated y'all life in such a way that you don't eat the same thing that I eat. You don't talk the same way I talk. You don't live the thoughts and the mentality and, and the things that... that um, uh, Y'all have evolved into and, be, and, and, and become mature in are things that I could never be able to recognize you just by looking at you because I wouldn't, I'm not at the same level or at the, at the same place. But nevertheless, Joseph was able to recognize his brothers and he put them through a series of tests to see uh, had they become different or had they, they changed their life. And, and what I began to see and understand is that as they um, uh, came and, and began to talk with him because at the end of that story, it said that Joseph had to reveal himself to his brothers. He had to take off the Egyptian clothes and really get naked with them and get, get before them in a way so that they could truly see who he truly was. And I believe that's what this kind of a, a platform is of us talking here. It's a way that we're able to sort of strip away all of the things that may not have went right or went wrong or all the other things so we can truly see our brothers for who they are and begin to truly have an understanding of what it took for some people to leave in the 60s and to go to another place that they had no idea about, only what they have read in the scriptures, and actually to establish land, language, and culture. And um, I, I begin to, to look at that story in a different way and said, these are our elder brothers, Joseph, then went ahead of us 
Because at the end, the story literally says, y'all meant this for evil. Y'all, y'all, y'all thought that y'all was doing something to destroy me, but the Father sent me here ahead of you so that I can preserve everybody. Yeah. And so I believe that's truly uh, what that community and that effort and that movement meant, that later on down the line we could come and actually be preserved knowing that there's people in the land of Israel that look just like us that um, uh, have, have uh, a, a mentality and a mindset that is uh, completely different from everybody else but felt they came there because the Spirit led them there and they've been in that place for 50 years. And um, I, I just believe that that's a great uh, an accomplishment. It's something uh, to be thankful to the Father for. Now we have a place that we can come to and travel and a place that we can connect uh, uh, with the elders there so that we can uh, uh, build on what has already been established there. I want to say to you, uh, Clay, Pastor Tatum, that <clears throat> that vision that God had given you about to show that Prince Amiel and I and Professor Lee Cummins did was a reactment of the modern day version of the redemption of his people. I want to add this to the understanding and that is that 1968 when Dr. King had his epiphany in Memphis, Tennessee and said God had blessed him to go to the mountaintop and look over and see the promised land. He said, I may not get that with you, but we as a people will get to the promised land. That was in April of 68, and in May of 68, we landed in Israel for the first time in 2,000 years. So I'm saying to you, all of the things that led up to that moment was preparing you for this day. Yes, sir. And that is that this generation in America and those that have not yet heard this message is that this is the Jubilee year. We've been in Israel for 50 years. Yes, sir. And so Prince Amiel was leading those out of the Isles of the Sea from Bermuda and Jamaica and other islands. I was going across Africa talking to the people and making them understand Prince El Ram was building a Pan-African connection and making sure that those who were Pan-African. What we are trying to say is that all of African Americans now can feel good that the Creator has kept his word, whether they're Christians, Muslims, yeah. Buddhists, Hebrews, they now know that the God of the scriptures is real. Yes. And you were brought to that land as a testimony. Yes. And Professor Cummings was God's scribe to record from 722 BC up until now the reality of the Hebrews because we intend to bring Professor Bruce Rosenstock from the University of Illinois and Rachel Havelock from the University of Illinois on this stage to show the whole family is now coming back together. The racism that we learned in America about white and black is not the reality of the new world that's coming into existence. The, the fight between Muslim and Christian or Ishmael and Isaac is no more with the coming of us because we have brought to the planet now, the reconnection of the whole family of God's people. So I want you to know, Pastor, that your vision that you saw about that program is real and the manifestation of that. So I just wanted you to know that we understand what you saw and felt and will do. Prince? So. We're having a wonderful time. Yes, sir. And uh, we want to thank our guests. What we're going to do is we're going to take a five-minute commercial break. You know we got to do that. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you back on the other side. Look forward to continued conversation. Yes, sir.
like working with your family? <laughs> Good question. Right, great question. Original Soul Vegetarian was established over 38 years ago from our parents. So we're second generation owners. Back then in the 80s, nobody knew what vegan looked like. But if you say, oh, this is barbecue, they'll eat it and say, oh, it's good. Original Soul Vegetarian has been an anchor in this community. At least 90% of our clientele aren't vegans. It has helped the community a lot with being aware of healthy eating and healthier options. Most of everything that we sell is sourced locally and it's all made in-house because it's just not about food for us. Your health is your wealth. Just add something healthy to what you're eating. You're gonna feel better. supposed to protect me, attacking me. Why are you afraid of me? Why do you think I'm dangerous? Why do I fear the people who are supposed to protect me? Why can't I make a peace sign without you labeling the gang sign? Why does standing on ground only work when I'm on the ground? Why do you show this photo over this one? Why do you only stop and frisk me? Why do you have low expectations for me? Why can't I run down the street without causing alarms? Why do you think I'm a thug? Why do you assume I'm armed? Why can't I break? Why is my mom scared every time I leave the house? Why are you targeting me? Why am I a target? Why? 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 I know why. And it has to stop. It must stop. Because I have dreams. Because I can change the world. Because I will make a difference. Because I have a feeling. Because I am strong. Because I am talented. I have a voice. I can find a cure. I have goals. I can lead the country. I am determined. I have a future. Because I'm a scholar. I am powerful. I'm someone's friend. I'm someone's brother. I'm someone's son. Someone loves me. And because my life matters too. My life matters. 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 Our lives matter. And so did theirs. Welcome back to the voice out of Zion dot today. So the picture that's being drawn, and first of all, uh, I want to say that uh, there's been two great shows that were done in sequential order by uh, Professor Cummins and by uh, our priest, Priest uh, Yokanai, who has done a fantastic job in explaining the history and his vision. And once he appeared into the Holy Land, what that meant to him. Yeah. So what's important is that we put it all together now. This is the new age. And it's so important that we can see how the new age reflects the people that are striving now to learn and to understand the temperature of this day, yeah. the visions of this day, and where we're going and going forward, where we're going and what that means to them. So it's so important to have you both together so you can share your experiences and what you've learned from each other as well. So kind of talk about, um, uh, Kohen Yoke and I, talk about the experience and the feelings you've got in going through the materials of Professor Cummins. Yeah, I, I was, um, you know, of course you come to the truth, you come to the realization of who you are, and now you, you, you're just hungry because you've been asleep all this time, you know. Sleep 30, 34 years, you sleep. And now all of a sudden you, you, you're trying to get material to eat on, you know. And I started... Tim Buck too. I started just grabbing books and mm. different Bibles and, and I mean just going through the, the uh, uh, different books and uh, someone uh, told me about, about a book called The Negro Question 
And I said, the Negro question? <laughs> I had a question. <laughs> and I ended up uh, receiving that book. And um, I, I opened it up. And, and from the first page, um, I was captivated. I couldn't put it down. Mm -hmm. And I just went through that book. And I said, wow, this is a great introduction to anybody, especially coming from the background of Christianity. This is a good platform and a good place for people to start to learn about the black presence in the Bible and understanding who they are, you know. And uh, when I had that, I couldn't put it down. And, I, and when I saw you on the show last week, I said, there's that brother. He's been in, he right in Chicago, man, <laughs> right here in Chicago. Right. I said, all this time. And uh, I got his book, and then I got the second book and got the third one. Ordered them all right through Amazon. Mm. And uh, they came right to my doorstep. And I wish I would have brought them down to get you to autograph all of them for me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, you know, it's, it's so important because I could tell from your energy today, Professor Cummins, you really enjoyed uh, the expressions that Cohen was giving. So tell us about that. What is it that touched you about what he was saying about hitting the Holy Land and heading up to that particular land? Well, well, the uh, the subject uh, over the last two weeks literally has been the absence of uh, an understanding uh, of what took place 50 years ago, and the fact that uh, the brothers are uh, it's, they're being recognized as a sovereign nation. But the the, it's the real issue is, uh, you know, how. How could something like this happen? Right. This is one of the greatest acts that has ever been completed or, for, uh, uh, or done by a citizen of Chicago. Yes. And it is not even recorded in the history books in the state of Illinois. Wow. And when they talk about it, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's in a humorous manner, mm -hmm. derisive. But it, it has not been afforded its uh, true place in the, the history of this city. You, you hear about uh, John Baptiste Dusabo, right. you know, uh, the so-called founder of Chicago. Mm -hmm. You hear about uh, people still talking about Michael Jordan, the Bulls, and uh, the, the championships. And yet, you have a group, some, some people from Chicago, Illinois, that went down to Liberia, suffered in the bush, Came about the bush strategically. I, 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 them guys are real sharp. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sent five people. Then they sent the party of 37. Then they sent another party of 49. Went uh -huh. the land, dealt with all the issues that they had that they got in the land. Then they fought against uh, uh, the judicial system. Yeah. yeah. Beat the judicial system. Then had all these other factors that took place. And then somewhere along the line, the politicians in, in America got behind their cause. Mm -hmm. How could, and, and I always say this, how could something like this not be in the history books in the state of Illinois in or in this country? Right. That's how huge this right. is. Yeah. Absolutely. And you see, it's, it's so important to understand what the Prime Minister, Prince ICL, was doing along with the great efforts, you know, of our brother, now the Dr. Amiel, what he was doing as well. Right. So they were playing two different angles of the same picture. Right. But today it's been brought all together. Yeah. It was all for a purpose to position us. And as you were saying earlier, Kohen, it was so important that we understood what all those historical stories really meant right. today. Right. That we look at it from an elevated point of view, right. those stories. And we can begin to see the movements today are really manifesting those same stories, but in a metaphysical picture that we could touch and participate in that process. Yeah. So now you are live participants of the historical messages that were written for now, yeah. Mm, yeah. for right now. Probably. You are actually active and live participants. You come in on the scene with the historical information, understanding and, not, and demanding the truth, not being, not accepting partial stories, not accepting somebody's opinion, right. but you putting the facts down, you, you know, listening very clearly and taking heed to getting the facts and making sure it's all documented. But you know what the, you know what the issue is? Mm -hmm. The issue is we have two 
we have two entities that are colliding here. Mm -hmm. One is called religion, mm -hmm. and one is called history. Okay. And if we got some brothers that cannot separate the two. Right. They cannot separate religion from a historical event. Mm -hmm. Religion, ideology has nothing to do with what took place historically. Right. Case in point, Cyrus in the book of Isaiah, what God did he worship? <laughs> Don't know about it was not recorded. Right. It was simply recorded that Cyrus would be the one to let uh, Judah go free. Mm -hmm. There, there are many instances, Pharaoh, yeah. when Abraham went to see Pharaoh, the book didn't tell you which God Pharaoh worshipped, right. it just mentioned what? Pharaoh. Pharaoh. So when I, I'm, I'm using these simplistic uh, models to show you. We have to be able to separate ideology from history. Right. And that is the problem that we have with these, these other brothers, these older elders in Chicago. Mm -hmm. this, this snub is not an international snub. It is not even a nationwide snub. It is a, them brothers in Demona, Prince them, they being snubbed by the elders here in Chicago. And history is repeating itself because when uh, Martin Luther King came to Chicago, who snubbed him? Mm -hmm. The black preachers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yes. so yeah. history is repeating itself. Wow. For some particular reason, this brotherhood in Chicago, they don't have a sense of real brotherhood. They did it to Martin, and now, and then I, I hear, I, you know, you hear certain things, and, and I keep saying, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What's important is, we got almost 5 million people in Demona, in Arad, and what's the other uh, place, the other uh, town? Arad, we, we all over the place. There's three all of them, was it? Arad, Miss Pigmy Moon, Demona. Right, so, so what I'm saying, and, and the word is, that the brothers are spread out over the land now. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so so the prop so so the thing now is we got to stop. Yes. We got to stop playing this game that this that this ain't taking place. This right. is actually right. happening. Right. Yeah. So, uh, with that being said, it's just time to grow up. Yes. Yes. Grow up. We have to recognize. We have to start putting them in our messages. Right. And and Cohen, yeah. you spoke about the point how this is the platform. Yeah. Yeah. This is the unity platform. Yeah. We're here not by accident. We're here by destiny. Right. right. This is the platform to bring all those elements together. You're open to come to our show. Speak yeah. to the people. Speak to the participants all around Israel, yeah. all around this country, and tell them where you are and how you want to participate in a collective process. Yeah. So there's no more we don't know about you or you don't know about us. Now it's more so the time that we come together, that we right. break bread together, yes. that we listen and learn from one another. It's past time for division. Right. It's past time right. for our separate opinions. Right. Let's have a collective opinion, and then let's work on that. Right. Narrow it down to a particular point of how we're going to move together, how we're going to do things together. Who's going to cover the front? Who's going to cover the sides? Who's going to cover the back? We work as a team. Right. We're a team. And if we really are a team, as we know that we should be in working as one, it's time to sit down and put all those opinions to the side. Yeah, Let's be true. one people who worship one Yah. Hallelujah. And it's that season for us. Yeah, it is. Uh, Professor Cummins, is there anything else you could tell me about what you heard today from Kohane when he was speaking about his trip and, and what he faced prior to coming to Israel? When he lost his group, when he lost the people that was, who loved him, when he was talking the way they wanted him to talk. Have well, you had certain experiences like well, that? Our people, our people have been uh, taught to, uh, to love the illusion. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Along with the illusion comes entertainment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we come in, you go to church, you show up, they're going to entertain you. You're going to get there at 9 o'clock, you're not going to leave to 3 you're not going to learn nothing. You're going to mm -hmm. give all your money away. They love to be defrauded. Yes. A guy come along like this minister right here. He came along. See, love will make you do something really strange. It'll make you tell the truth. Yeah, it so it was his love for the, the sheep that caused him to go back and say, look, I taught what, I, I taught what my teacher taught me right. and what his teacher taught him. Mm -hmm. But I've since found out that it was all wrong. 
Yes. Yeah. So I'm gonna stand before you, and this, that took courage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna stand before you and tell you, this is the right way. What right. we was doing was the wrong way. Right. Now, that took courage. Yeah. Sometimes I've had times. I'm a pastor also. I'm mm -hmm. a pastor, translator, researcher, the whole nine. Mm -hmm. I've gotten up and done lessons, and I did a lesson in there. I have to come back the next Sabbath and say, hey, look, you know what? <laughs> I taught that, but I. That's wrong. It takes courage to say you're wrong. Right. And this is the problem that we're having in the churches. This man, this man is an example of how all the pastors are supposed to conduct themselves around the world when they find the truth. They got to, they, because you know why? A minister's job, your first job is to do what? Deliver yourself from God. Yes, yes. That's your first job. Yeah. And after you deliver yourself from God, then you do what? You deliver the, the people. people from God. Mm -hmm. So every minister's responsibility, include the Kohen, you have to deliver yourself from God first. And these pastors have to do that. Yes. And they refuse. Yes. Yeah. So if that answers your question, well, no, I just think this, I think that dude that is that's <laughs> courageous, man. It's, it's a, a perfect answer. Man. It's, yeah. it's a perfect answer because he decided and made a decision. If I'm the only one in this room, right. I'm going to continue in the new understanding right. that I have. And we talk a lot about this new, 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 the change that's taking place internally in us. We don't fully understand it as a people, but it's coming clearer now right. that we're adapting ourselves to this new vision. Yeah. And it's becoming part of our life, not a religion, not a lifestyle only, but a culture, yeah. a way of living. It's a new part of us now that we have to embrace. Don't you remember probably 10 years ago, it wasn't a whole lot, you wasn't bumping into a whole lot of people that said that they were Hebrew Israelites. Oh, Do you yeah. remember that? Oh, no. oh, it, no. was, it was far in between. Now yes. all of a sudden, every, Whitney Houston, when he, Whitney Houston did it, the, the Negro community, community freaked out. Mm -hmm. Fre uh, Morgan Freeman yes. just jumped up, didn't he? Morgan Freeman said he's a Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> all of a sudden, you got some rappers. Mm -hmm. You got the basketball mm -hmm. player. What's his name? Uh, that played with the Knicks, uh, Stoudemire. Yeah. Yeah. So all of a sudden, yeah. all of a sudden, it's cheek or it's fashionable to be a Hebrew Israelite. Mm -hmm. When Prince them did it, it was not right. fashionable. Right. They was they were the trailblazers. I always tell my sons, it's hard being first. Yes. Yeah. The guy that goes to the blackboard first, hey man, everybody's laughing at him because he's making a couple of mistakes. But the guy that goes to the blackboard second, third, fourth, that's us. Right. Right. It's easy now. It's easy right. now. Right. See, when, when Prince Asiel traveled the world, and when he talked to ambassadors, presidents, heads of state, all around Africa, outside of Africa, right. in America, when he did his travels, Hebrews didn't know what he was doing. Right. They just knew he was moving around. Right. But it became clear as time went on that he was establishing a foundation that he had to come back later through us to pick up those seeds that was planted. Right. So he was laying a foundation 30, 40 years yes. ago that we had to come back and spend the time now to pick those seeds up. I mean, I'm communicating through many people around the world now who know the prime minister, yeah. who know Prince Asiel, and, and who also know Prince Amiel. And they know them from years ago when things were established. Yeah. Now we're coming back now and saying, okay, First of all, the light has hit them after 30 or 40 years. Wow. So now they're coming back saying, okay, what is it you need me to do? I heard your broadcast. I was glad to hear from you again after years. Now I understand what you was trying to say. But it took time. It took time. Like it took us time. Yeah. When you first heard the truth, you had to sit down for a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. That is what I did. When I first came to the knowledge of the truth, and this is the God's truth. Okay. When I first, when I, when I first heard the truth, I went out, bought me some Hennessy, drove around in my car <laughs> for about two, three hours, drank it. And mm -hmm. then I said to myself, I said, well, I guess that's the truth. Okay. And then the next day I ran with it. Okay. okay. But it was, one of them, it was one of them kind of moments, man, where it was so unbelievable, but yeah. it was right there. Yeah. And I just kept going over it. I went over the truth about four or five times, and then I said, okay, I accept this. Yeah. So, you know, uh, we talked about, I think, me and uh, I don't know if I mentioned this to the elder. What, people, what did uh, the deterrents of the truth do, or uh, people that uh, try to hide the truth, they try to put a full-letter word on it. 
mm -hmm. race mm -hmm. or racism. Mm -hmm. yeah. The truth doesn't have a color. The truth is spiritual. Yes. And so this is how they derail the truth. Uh, the Gentiles now, or the European uh, uh, seminary, uh, white seminary, they're coming out with phrases like, uh, there's an Afro-Christianity or an African Christianity. <laughs> a, it's not African Christianity, and if it was, it was always African uh, Christianity. Mm -hmm. We didn't have our origins in Africa. Mm -hmm. We were originally from ancient Sumer, ancient right. Mesopotamia. That's right. We migrated to Africa to get get the record straight. Yeah, yeah. It was all landlocked. It was you all one land. Yes. Yeah. But but the thing is, Elder, is that this thing was always a black thing. Mm -hmm. you know, I had a uh, I had a, a Egyptologist uh, come inside uh, Princeton's uh, restaurant the other day and say, "Ain't no such thing as Israel." And uh, 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 the Jews came from Europe. I said, "No, you mistaken." Paul went to the, Paul took the gospel to Europe. Mm -hmm. He went up into Rome. Mm -hmm. He went up into Greece. I said, "This thing started in it started in Mesopotamia, and it migrated this concept down to uh, to Africa." Yes, yes. So we started this. Yeah. We started it. And and what what happened was when we went to captivity, the Catholic Church took this thing. They took a concept and they 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 made an abomination. Made an abomination. Tell me this, please. <laughs> How do you see yourself <coughs> as a priest to the Gentiles? How do you see yourself in working with other people that don't know you personally, but that understand the truth and is listening to it now today and becoming more adept? To understanding what's being said now that are not of your own. How do you how do you see yourself working with other people? Well, I, I think thank you. Um, I was sitting there thinking about that that, that question there, and um, I've already been in contact with quite a few people around the world. I had a sister from uh, Egypt. She came and she visited our ministry, and she was just so excited about finding out who the true Hebrews were. Yes. And uh, she came and she visited, and she literally bowed down to us at, at the service, which was something very profound and very powerful uh, for us. And um, I had people come to visit and, and, and see us from Australia and from some other places around the world. But I believe there's, there's, there's room. <laughs> there's room for everybody. Yeah. Uh, though millions have come, there's still room for, for, for more. Yeah. And um, I, I sort of open up my heart and I embrace all of those that want to come and, and roll up their sleeves in the work. Because just like the scripture says, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Absolutely. So we need laborers to come and labor in the vineyard. Uh, until we create uh, uh, the, the world that I, John, saw. He said, I saw a new heaven and I saw a new earth. And this new heaven and new earth had to come down because the old one, there was no place or room for the old one. So, so this new heaven and new earth that came out of Shemaim, I believe, is coming. And uh, we are the, the, the ones that uh, are going to be uh, authorized by the spirit of the Father to bring this thing all, all the way on in. You know? And I'm just so glad to be a part of this season, to be a part of the remnant of that group. I'm glad I was able to get that 50 years added on to me. And I just feel, <laughs> feel like running. <laughs> right, right. Running all the way to the right. end, you know, right, right. because it's only the ones at the end that's going to make it in, you know. Right. So I want to go all the way to, uh, you know, to the end and make it all the way. That's important. And Professor, how do you see your next book now, based upon the experiences within this past week? I'm upset. A couple of weeks. I'm, I'm upset because the next book <laughs> belongs to Princess Yeldon, <laughs> and it's, a, it's probably one of. The, and I talk, I say this to him all the time because this is one of the best stories that have never been heard. Yeah, it, it's gonna yeah. be, it's about the people and it's about the entire, it's about the entire operation from Chicago to Liberia to Israel wow. to like uh, the elder that was sitting here earlier, he said that after 50 years, they had to come back to America to explain themselves. Well, that shouldn't have to be. Right. Mm -hmm. If the elders in Chicago had set aside, they did personal differences and had been teaching about the people in the land. You don't have to teach about the people in the land in all your messages, but at some point in time, in a 12-month period, you mean you never mentioned the no. sacrifice that the people made that right. went that left Chicago and went down into Israel? I mean, come on, man. Right. See, so we shouldn't even be having this conversation. Absolutely not. You, you, you feel me? It's, like, it's like a child. You, can, you know, told the child, don't do that. 
You told him five times. You have to sit him down and have a conversation with him before you chastise him. You shouldn't be having the conversation. Right. That is how much, that is how ridiculous what is taking place in Chicago really is, man. Yes, 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 how can yes. you ignore your family? That's our family. They That's came right. straight out yes. of Chicago. That's yes. right. They didn't yes. come out of Philly. They didn't come out of Detroit. But, well, they began to migrate. But the sure. initial crew, the core sure. group, yeah. Yeah. Chicago. Yeah. The, the core group has been known all around the country. Man, That's the right. city got to the point, man, where when I talk about it, it's like it has become incredulous. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So to, to answer your question, that's what the next book, the next book is being designed in such a way that it can be placed in the classrooms in Israel. Mm. So it's going to be, I'm being real methodical with it, and I'm doing a lot of phone conversations with the, uh, the original guys yes. that started this. And, uh, uh, you know, Prince Isaiah, now he always, when I first met him, he said, we already knocked on them doors. You know, talking about the kings and the presidents mm -hmm. and the presidents. That's how he talked to me. <laughs> I knocked on them doors already, so so okay, good. So help me walk through them doors. Right, right, right. You got to get through. You got to get through. You know what I'm saying? You got to get through. Right, right, my brother. That's right. right. And and Cohen, what do you see in knocking through those doors? Is going to be some of the key spiritual elements that are going to be needed to help the healing. Yeah, we're going to go after the uh, the uh, uh, elect that is hidden in the elite of the world, okay. and we're going to begin to, to rescue them and begin to uh, uh, cause them to be an awakening, because there's a great awakening that's on this earth, whether you believe it, understand it, right. or know it. There's a great awakening that's happening, uh, especially among my generation, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that it's happening. And uh, uh, the same vision that Ezekiel had, where he saw there was a valley of dry bones, right. those bones are, are rattling and they're coming together, and at the end of, the, uh, of, of that, that vision, he saw a great exceeding great army standing there yes, of yes. people saying, hey, what must we do? What can we do? Let's move into this, into the next thing, you know, next season. So I'm excited to just be a part of it. And uh, um, I'm, I'm here. We're doing music videos about it. We're singing about it because it's something about songs and music that, that, that creates a certain frequency in the atmosphere. Uh, so we, we released a song uh, 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 today dealing with I'm Back Home. Mm. And uh, we want to start provoking people to uh, make their trips and make their uh, uh, holy visitations up in the Holy Land. Mm. You know, instead of going to Disney World for next year when, you, <laughs> right. when, when tax season comes, you know, <laughs> right. uh, let's go to that. Let's leave it. Let's, let's get some passports. Let's let's get out of the country and go uh, uh, somewhere to see uh, some things that are historical, some things that tell you who you are and, and give and leave a nice um, understanding for the generation that's coming up behind. Yeah. So all of my children, we're, we're uh, getting their passports in the process of doing that now so we can all go up to the Holy Land uh, come springtime. That's, that's so powerful. Hallelujah. So powerful. Amen. Take, and, and don't forget, take an offering with you. Take an offering with me. Take an offering with you. Yes, and, and, you know, because the people in the land, you know, uh, 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 the people in the land, they need donations just like the, uh, the, the, uh, the Edomites or the, uh, the Khazars. Yeah. So they need help. And, and the thing is, yeah. uh, you still sound like a Sunday preacher. <laughs> <laughs> I got my learning, your but didn't delivery, lose my burning, huh? Your, 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 delivery, your delivery is cold, man. It's like, hey, hey, I thought I was in church for a few days. But see, that's uh, so important, though. Yeah, that's so important yeah, he still got it. You're going to you're, you're gonna be talking to pastors yeah, he's who, still who got are already it. on the Christian yeah. page, but who are listening. Yeah. yeah. And those are the ones that are going to be seeking you out. Yeah. Matter of fact, you talked about the music. You produce songs. You play music, you yes, sing sir. music. Yes, sir. Uh, that has been a powerful tool for you, hasn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have uh, got four CDs out. Uh, we got uh, Torah. Uh, then we got another CD called Now Faith Is. And then another one called I Got Some Truth. And the one we just released is um, War, Destiny, and Freedom. Oh, great. And it has um, a whole like documentary style to it. And we just mm. released the other one today, um, I'm Back Home. It's a video teaser that we're doing. Mm. Uh, just go to the Facebook page, Pastor John Tatum. Uh, subscribe there, Pastor John Tatum, and uh, you can see that video right now. Okay, great. We're going to be looking Hallelujah. forward to that. Hallelujah. And, and last, Professor Cummins, tell us about your writings, and you told us what's coming up next, but tell us also about the depthness that you've covered in putting together everything from six books to a Bible, <laughs> and I think wow. there was another... Two Bibles. Two Bibles. Two Bibles. Okay. This is the thing. 
the, the books were designed. Uh, now we have a witness here, but the books were designed. Like I said, that the, uh, the the first time I came on the show with you guys, they, they were designed to bring the convert or the potential convert yeah. from one level of consciousness to the other. Mm -hmm. So he starts out with the basic "Who am I?" and it teaches, it, it answers the question "Who he is." It answers him. Then he goes to the second phase where he gets advanced artifacts, timelines, spreadsheets, eyewitness accounts. Then he goes down, he goes down on the day of Pentecost and it, it dispels the lie that the uh, Gentiles took over the church on the day of Pentecost. You know why? It's a lie because wasn't nobody in Jerusalem but who? Jews. Jews. Mm. The Gentiles hadn't been admitted to the church yet, so why would they be down there keeping the Feast of Weeks? <laughs> okay, they had okay. no knowledge of it. Mm -hmm. they only, right. The only time they had knowledge of the Feast of Weeks of Pentecost was after who went to them? Paul. Wow. Paul yeah. taught them Pentecost. Yeah. He taught them Passover. He taught them unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. He taught them the Sabbath day. Right. Mm -hmm. And then from there we go into the missing link. When you start dealing with the missing link, what it does is it shows you that the Gentiles tried to hide three to four hundred years of human history, and they did that. But when you go back and you do the math, you look at the archaeology, you look at the genetics, you look at the eyewitness accounts, you start realizing three hundred years was missing. You know what it was? It was the fact that the black Jacobites, King James was a Jacobite king, mm -hmm. him and his sons. They not only ruled uh, uh, Europe, but they were the original colonists colonizers of the 13 colonies. So that's why that, we have a book called The 13 Black Colonies. And it is the truth. Hmm. Israel was the original founder of the 13 colonies. When we came into the colonies, they came in with fringes on. There's eyewitness descriptions of King James of being swarthy or black. Then we came, we did uh, part five. Part five uh, is dealing with uh, his original subject, uh, uh, dealing with this concept of a Joseph. Yeah. An Egyptologist came into the uh, uh, Prince uh, restaurant the other day, yesterday, and, and, and out loud said, there's no, there's no uh, proof of the existence of Israel. And I heard the dude. He said it twice. So when he said the second time, I responded to him. I said, man, don't you? I said, you know what a cartouche is? Because he's Egyptologist. He said, yeah. I said, they've got cartouches of the pharaohs in Egypt that has the name Yahweh embedded mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. I said, if you go down in the 12 Dynasty tombs, you see the granaries from uh, the days of uh, Joseph when they were preparing for the great famine. Mm -hmm. I said, if you go down into the 18th Dynasty tombs, you see the names of the pharaohs with the last name Moses that adopted Moses. And you see Israel all over the walls, mm -hmm. being beaten, building statues and pyramids. Mm -hmm. uh, part 7 of Swarthy Memoirs. It, is a, it, it reinforces part six because it deals with the eyewitness account and it proves that there were five black armies that fought the American Revolution. Eyewitness account, they were all mourn or black. And then the two Bibles, uh, the first Bible is Moses uh, and the five books of the law. It's our oh, version of the Torah. Yeah. I'm going to be updating that Bible uh, real soon. I'm going to go back in and add a little more Paleo Hebrew to it. Now, the book, uh, Samuel to the Last King of Judah, it has a lot of uh, Paleo Hebrew in it, artifacts. All of them, both of the Bibles have artifacts, uh, timelines, spreadsheets, ver uh, uh, references. They're, it's, it's, they, they're both unique. And then the seventh seal. The seventh seal was written for any brother or sister that had a weak minister. You got this weak minister. All he's doing is entertaining you every time you show up in church. You can go by the seventh seal and it'll save you. Mm. You can walk away from reading this uh, collection of books. You'd be well on your way. I, no, it'll change your DNA. It'll alter your DNA. Mm -hmm. You'll go from being a non-believing Hebrew to a believer. Yeah. So that, well, that's all I well, got. Well, I, what I want to say that I just feel so blessed to be in both of your presence today. Tell the truth, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> because you offer, because you both offer a wealth of knowledge from, from different sir. angles. Right. And the angle we're at now is bringing it all together. That's yes, right. Sir. And so it's just a blessing to have you both here and to speak from your perspectives of your experiences in Israel and experiences here and your yeah. experiences here and your writings. It's key information. This is the building of the new foundation. Thank you, everyone, for listening and tuning in. And look at some of our past broadcasts for more information. If you have any questions, feel free to email us. You can email me at malachi 244 
at yahoo.com. You can also come to our, come to our city, spend time with us in Chicago, study with us, uh, have service with us, and begin to enjoy and meet us so we can be your brethren as we are with others. Peace and blessings to you. Continue to tune in, and we look to see you tomorrow. We'll have a special broadcast for you tomorrow. So stay tuned for more details on that. But definitely stay on our chat line and continue to communicate to us during these broadcasts. Welcome again. Shabbat Shalom. And thank you for listening to the voice out of Zion.today.